Distinguished colleagues, uh, good afternoon. Unfortunately, uh, Professor Corigliano, who uh, wants to really make his speech, he couldn't come. And we found that out only the day before yesterday. I uh, supposed to be only the member of the dis a participant of the discussion. We plan to have uh, an interesting lecture with the discussion of various strategies. But I hope that we will have another chance to invite Professor Corigliano to our uh, probably future events. That's why I I thought that I don't have any right to repeat his lecture and to discuss everything he planned to. So I decided uh, to be as a member, as a participant of the discussion with a little bit more of time. Uh, just tell you more about immune therapy of breast cancer and the, the small achievements that we've already made and about the uh, really brilliant prospects that we have. So... Uh, modern immunotherapeutical therapeutical approaches, first results and perspective for the clinical usage of anti-PD-1, PDL one MKA, uh, breast cancer. And as a symbol, I chose the phoenix, phoenix bird, because immune therapy, uh, exactly as phoenix, has its rebirth every 10 years. What is the negative cancer of the, uh, what is the negative breast cancer? It's a very um, uneven, you know, um, group, uh, which main principle is no. So no estrogen receptors, no progesterone receptors, no HER2 receptors. So what does that mean, triple no? First couple of words about this clinical characteristics of uh, triple negative cancer, breast cancer. First, well, it's important to know that the percentage of the findings of uh, triple negative breast cancer is very various, and it usually depends on the tests that are made, surrogate immune gistochemical, molecular immune gistochemical, and etc. The very important characteristics is the absence of the, uh, you know, substantial association between the lymph nodes, uh, stat lymph node status and their future development and progression of the disease. So the um, depending on the stage, the finding of really progressing metastasis becomes quite difficult. And well, the progression comes quite early. Um, and we see that the, you know, relapse peak is not there. We see like, uh, first, second year, then seven, then eight, and nine, uh, there is still quite a high risk of the hormone-dependent breast cancer progression. First, because there is adherent hormone therapy, which lasts not less than five years in present. That's why all the relapses, they happen in seventh or eighth year. Secondly, because the hormone-dependent uh, breast cancer really develops slowly, slowlier, mm, you know, uh, differently from the triple negative breast cancer. We see that for uh, this violet li purple line, it's we, the relapses are in the first, second, third year. The most part of death, death happens during the first five years. And for the triple negative breast cancer, it's very characteristic, the higher frequency of uh, visceral organs suffering and well, the um, other systems during the whole course of the development of the breast cancer. So not even not less that when they had to positive breast cancer. A quite characteristic for it, it's also the response, but unfortunately this response is not very long lasting. Uh, if the therapy for the metastatic breast cancer is 52, Weeks, so for triple negative, it's only 12 weeks. I mean, first line, the second line is nine weeks, and three lines, third line is, well, catastrophic figure, uh, four weeks. So patients, they almost do not even come to the planned control visit when we register the progression of the disease. Differently from the other forms where, you know, the main, the average uh, therapy duration is 12 weeks. Of course, this early progression that um, causes early deaths makes us uh, hurry in looking for the new treatment strategies of the, for this disease. And obviously, the, the key role in this search uh, falls upon the molecular and genetic researches and new modern classifications that appear from time to time. These classifications are ba based on the uh, genetic profile creation and will include seven subtypes of uh, triple negative breast cancer. First, unclassified to basal-like um, 
immunomodulatory mesenchymal mesenchymal uh, stem like and the one uh, uh, the immunomodulatory is the one that I would like to tell you more about. So the subtypes of triple negative breast cancer differ not only uh, according to their genetic expression, but also um, they differ according to potential targets for the therapy. And of course, the most important potential therapy target for immunomodulatory subtype is the blockade of the, uh, you know, um, control points for the immunity. What is it about and why all, every oncologist is so much interested in immune, uh, immune therapy of the tumor? This interest is related to the real hope to uh, to survive, to cure the re relevant, uh, well, small number of patients. So you see the target therapy is uh, without survival, without progression. But well, at a certain point, it's still the red line comes up to the violet, uh, to the violet line, to the purple line. And immune therapy, when at the first stage, there is no difference between the survival curves. Uh, but well, in some period of time with immune therapy, uh, in some time, usually it's not less than three months or six months or even more, the curves are uh, coming separate directions. And a certain part of the patients, like about 20 or 30 percentage of patients, they have uh, long lasting you know, survival um, due to the immunotherapeutical strategy. And this could last for years, basically, and uh, very carefully, but we can actually uh, can call this, we can, we can very carefully, but sometimes call this, uh, you know, uh, the cure of people uh, as a result of immunotherapeutical approaches that we have. Uh, so the relations between the organism is the tumor is very complicated and the immune system role is not that clear for us. We used to think that this is the protection from the, uh, you know, uh, tumor progression, but the recent researches says, say that it's not correct. For present, the uh, relation between tumor, uh, uh, tumor system and immune system can be described as, as follows. The first very early stage of the relation is the illumination period when uh, the um, there is like immune um, you know uh, when the immune system oversees the tumor uh, the tumor cells are eliminated by the immune system and in some cases we sometimes don't even know that this period uh, took place because the immune system very effectively kills tumor cells nevertheless some of the cells manage to survive and well the second stage comes up so it's called the equilibrium stage also called sleeping cancer uh, when during this period the survive survival you know cells try to learn how to fight the immune system and there are new mutations appear new uh, heterogeneity and the immune selection immune system kills the sensitive clones as if you know choosing immune resistant clones of the tumor that starts to that start to progress and that lead to the third uh, phase uh, with of the relationship with the immune system which is called escape escape of the tumor from the immune response and this opportunity to escape is directly related to the progression of the tumor and so as the relation between the tumor and the organism is that complicated an enormous number of cells participate in this relationship and the micro uh, you know uh, the micro cells are very important here so it's a very complicated complex and there are a lot of mechanisms. First mechanism is an ineffective uh, presentation of tumor antigen in the, in, to the immune system. So uh, the tumor knows how to mask it. Uh, the tumor knows how to escape. The tumor can lose the antigens of the main complex of hyster, you know, um, uh, well, has the picture, and well, it could be related to the blockade of antigens of suppressant molecules, and etc. The next mechanism of the uh, escape is the secretion of the immune suppressant factors. The tumor recruits the micro uh, so well, it uh, the micro environment that starts suppression the immune system. The third one, the recruitment of immune suppressant 
cells, we all remember like uh, uh, this, uh, the discovery of these cells that block the secretion of T lymphocytes. The secretion is very small, though it really plays a very important role in immune tolerance mechanism. In particular, the tumor learns how to recruit the suppressant cells to protect the immune system. The myeloid suppressors are also very important here in the number of other populations, by the way. And the last mechanism, which I'd like to dwell a little bit more on, is the dysregulation of the uh, control points of the immune response of T lymphocytes. Uh, it turned out to be that the activity of T lymphocytes is related and regulated by a number of receptors, both activ activating receptors that activates the uh, you know the work of receptors and the destruction of T cells, and also inhibiting or blocking receptors. These are the receptors that block the effective finding and killing of the tumor activated uh, by T lymphocytes. So our main goal is to, uh, related to immune therapy, is to activate activating seg signals or these little chains and block blocking signals. Let us have a look at the ideal T cell immune response to a tumor. How do we imagine that? So we see the tumor cells that start produce a uh, tumor-related antigen that is captured by the dendritic cell. Uh, you see how it happens. Uh, it captures it and it starts processing. And it produces information that is later sent, uh, I mean information about this antigen that is then sent to T lymphocyte. This antigen transition is, happens with the participation of the molecules of the main complex of uh, uh, the, uh Uh, so we need to have like two activating si signals, right? A grown dendritic cell that prepared that prepared like BCM, B7, uh, uh, MHC. Uh, this receptor works together with T cell receptor that translates the information about the antigen and the transport cells work together with the molecule CD28. This is a second cost stimulating signal that is necessarily to activate and to, well, to, to transfer the information to T lymphocytes. And this process is happening in the lymph node. This is the first, you know, initial stage of the activation. So we have the T cell memory cell um, that can be stored there for years. And then we have the clone expansion of lymphocytes. We see how they divide. <laughs> and we'll activate it. Uh, T lymphocyte uh, finds the tumor. Uh, so the restrictions is happening with the participation of the molecule of the main complex of Heister. Uh, um, and then it works with um, various molecules that effectively destroy our tumor cell and it dies. So there are two phases here, the, the, uh, the initial activation phase and the effector phase when the lymphocytes really recognizes the tumor. And in this context, we can, context, we can really see two um, tumor phenotypes in a, a relevant to the immune response. It's non-inflammatory immune uh, phenotype, but please mm, note that in uh, Russian uh, literature, we are used to this term only in the context on inflammatory processes. In English literature, it's about really any infiltration, not only about inflammatory process. So there are a little uh, ter terminological variation. So there are two types of tumor phenotypes, non-inflammatory without lymphoid infiltration. Uh, so the recognition happens on the earlier stages as, for example, the, um, the loss of a HLA molecule or some you know, functioning defects of dendrite cells and some others. And also inflammatory phenotype. You see non-inflammatory phenotype, no infiltrating lymphocytes. We have to look uh, for some other reasons here. I mean, 
uh, other ways of uh, effective immune response and inflammatory uh, phenotype. There is infiltration of phenotypes. There is a recruitment, but the tumor is growing and for some reason tumor cells are not recognized and well, uh, or rather are not killed by the immune system. Uh, what could be the reason for that? First, because the activity of T lymphocytes is regulated by the huge number of various receptors blocking and activating and the most important role in the blockade of the function of these cells play CTLA-4 molecule and PD-1 molecule. So our main goal is to block the blocking inhib inhibiting uh, signals of the immune response. And well, having a look at the general principles of the cancer immune therapy, uh, I would call it immune checkpoint blockades or um, inhibiting of uh, the blockade of immune response or because well in, in Russian literature there is not you know a set term for this going back to the theory the first stage we need two signals to activate T lymphocyte the dendritic cell brings the information to the T cell receptor the B cell molecule in, co in cooperation with the CD28 cell but well on uh, the lymphocyte there is also CTLA-4 receptor, the cytotoxic antigen of the fourth uh, type that can be really uh, a link to B7 molecule. There is no second co-activating signal that uh, leads to the energy of T lymphocyte. The information is not uh, translated. And if we would like to protect our uh, anti-tumor T lymphocyte, we can introduce, induce the monoclonal antibody like uh, ibilimumab, which is well known and well the that restores the process of the information translation, and we manage to to uh, to blockade the immune response on the first stage. And then we go further. Our activated lymphocyte escaped from the suppressors, got all the information, and here really is very close to the tumor already, and is already all willing to kill it. And he recognizes with his T cell receptor, he recognized this, the anti-gene on the uh, tumor cell, the molecules of the main high um, compatibility complex participates in that, but this is the receptor of programmed death. Uh, it plays a very important role in a healthy organism because the healthy cells, they progress with the ligands. Uh, here, this is about PD-1 cell, and this mechanism prevents the development of autoimmune reaction. But the tumor is very clever. It learns how to escape the death, how to protect and fight the T lymphocytes. And she also learned how to produce the ligands for PD uh, from this uh, cell. It's PDL1, PDL2. So the an energy of T lymphocyte happens there and it does not kill the tumor cell. So our goal is here to protect the anti tumor T lymphocyte from immune suppression. And this is basically the essence of the new sphere of blockade of PD-1, PDL one uh, I mean, this pathway. How can we do that? We can induce monoclonal antibody to the receptor PD-1, uh, preventing its cooperation with all the ligands, or there is a monoclon uh, monoclonic antibodies, PDL one or PDL 2 We can induce them to the tumor cell. So uh, there is only PDL 2 left. So what can influence the effectiveness of the inf in immune response of PDL or PDL one antibodies. First is the you know background mutational uh, pressure. You know, load. I mean, uh, um, the um, the NMLC, for example, here it's very there. Uh, it's there, and well, the one related to micro instability. When there is target and driver uh, target, for example, with NMLC, we we used to that. But well. Talking about the prospects of the immune therapy, the absence of a single driving mutation could be very true because there is some uh, very often there is a whole background of mutations. What about breast cancer? Unfortunately, the breast cancer uh, in uh, the uh, mutational load framework is well quite far from the middle even. Let's be honest. So the prospects of their strategy are not that you know bright. Uh, so the mutational load really influences the effectiveness of anti-PD-1 therapy. For example, the micro-instability uh, tumors, they show response. The red one, though, is without micro-satellite uh, instability. So, well, uh, lung cancer, the smoker's response is better, and the response correlated with the bigger um, load. 
uh, what can also uh, influence the effectiveness, immune response to the you know, uh, safety of antigen. If there is a necrosis, for example, the antigens are still there, they, they're kept there, and the organism receives the danger signal. And this is actually what new strategies are about, the strategies of combining the uh, radiation therapy and anti-PD-1 therapy. If the cell dies as a result of apoptosis, uh, there is a degradation, so there is no danger signal no immune response as a consequence and will of course the genetic signature um, gene signature that correlates with the opportunity with the with the chance to respond to anti-pd anti-pdl therapy uh, this um, well uh, this work uh, is really related to the lymphoid infiltration and the better survival rate and could really help to uh, choose patients for the immune therapy but well, the gene signature related to the localization of the tumor, unfortunately, you see that the breast, uh, the mammal gland is not the best, and not, but though not the worst variant, though. Somewhere closer to the end. What else can actually influence the effectiveness of anti-PDL strategy and what can also help us to choose uh, target patient? The, I, and this is the expression of PDL1 by the tumor cells. This expression is, uh, is well, um, said by the uh, predictors. It, it is the predictor of the response to anti-PD-1, PDL1 therapy. It's correlated with the type of the tumor, other drugs, non-melanoma, non and um, LC, um, a lot of various stuff, quite far really from here. Um, but in this presented information, 47% of the uh, tumor, uh, the disseminated breast cancer expressed the molecules of BDL1. There are various, you know, ratios, evaluation, uh, you know, ways. Every producer, manufacturer has its own diagnosticum, has its own, you know, uh, rating system it's not only uh, it's not always classical as an example i i demonstrate you the uh, just the chemical from zero to uh, three plus and well more or less it's quite similar to the notion of hyper expression with her uh, to uh, her to positive uh, breast cancer and i repeat this is immune is the chemical method Besides, the PDL1 molecule expressed uh, is expressed also in a very big number of immune cells that participate in intercellular uh, co well um, relations. But that's why, for now, the expression is evalu is evaluated not only on tumor cells but also in the immune competent cells. And usually, the tumor cell expression is correlated with the number and presence on of immune. Uh, competent cells. Uh, going more to practice, but before that, a couple of words about the evaluation of the effectiveness. We are really used to the curves of the survival, uh, to these waterfalls, but right now we have new diagrams. Right now, we see these type of diagrams where every horizontal line is, stands for one patient, and at a certain stage, well, the, this. Uh, small figure we register the effective response and if the color changed so the patients stopped the treating and uh, is not receiving the treatment any longer and uh, well mm, well and it also records the information about uh, the stopping of anti pd one therapy this very beautiful uh, uh diagram when every you know this uh, spider leg stands for one patient uh, you see the growth of tumor and you see the fall in the size of tumor. Unfortunately, this is a very common situation when at the very first, uh, we would consider it as a traditional chemotherapy as a progressing of the disease, but then later on the patient uh, comes to the response. So unfortunately, it's registered in some period of time and uh, for some fast uh, progressing patient, well, it could be this patient should not be really included in clinical trial. Also, there is a notion of uh, of, uh, uh, of false progression when it's about the density of the immune cells. Uh, like uh, basically, it's quite good, but uh, formally, this progression could be very difficult. Uh, very, it's very complicated to differentiate from the other. So, is there any right? Is there any place for? Um, for a disseminated 
Breast cancer in immunotherapy. Yes, there is place for it. And in our researches, we have proven that the inflammatory tumor phenotype is very often registered at the breast cancer. You see this infiltration of the tumor by the immune competent cells uh, in accordance with CD45. Uh, the main here is, well, effectory T lymphocytes, CD8 plus positive T lymphocytes. And the inf increase in the infiltrations of T lymphocytes is registered among the all overall survival of the patients with the breast cancer and the main loss of the antigens by the main complex of uh, uh, high compatibility uh, does not influence the, the, the forecast, though, uh, well, it changes the picture a little bit. And well, uh, with the breast cancers, uh, the most evident, you know, solution is the using of, um, well, ADCC, the trastuzumab, the humanized anti-HER2 uh, AG1. Well, but it's there is still toxicity. This is the first uh, type of immune therapy of metastatic breast cancer, and in this presented uh, work with the sequencing method, they evaluated the expression of 957 genes, including the immune index gene, and also the signature of the population of the immune cells and many other uh, points. And it turned out to be that the immune signature, the dynamics of the immune signature after the first dosage of the trastuzumab, can predict the response to the non-adjuvant therapy uh, if they raise trastuzumab with the HER2 positive breast cancer. And I believe this test could be really used to uh, choose patients for this type of therapy. And immune signature, as I have already told you, is a good predictor for the response to trastuzumab if there will be some benefit from trastuzumab. And it's also very good for correlate the survival rate. PDL1 uh, uh, level evaluation. Uh, our PDL level is evaluated um, for another 600 patients with breast cancer, and well, there are two mechanisms of the induction of the expression of PDL1 were described. Um, mechanism of the expression by all tumor cells. And well, the percentage here is very high, but the expressed lymphoid infiltration is only in about 16% of the patients. And the high level of uh, TLS and the expression of PDL1 only is true for 12% of the uh, patient. These factors were correlated with the survival rate. Anti-tumor immunity is uh, has a crucial role in the survival patients with the um, well um, early stages of breast cancer. Uh, it was proven in 24. 2015, though still only about 10% of the patients are characterized with a high level of the infiltration with triple negative breast cancer and the high level of infiltration of immune competent cells. And this factor is also correlating with the improvement of the survival and not only survival. It turned out to be that the infiltration of immune competent, the number of the infiltrating lymphocytes could not only be forecasting, but only predicting. And it can help us to predict the possibility of the response to the chemotherapy. That's why the further researches in this sphere could be very useful to for us to choose patients for uh, chemotherapy. Triple negative breast cancer is characterized by higher mutational load in comparison with HER2 positive and hormone dependent uh, subvariants of the disease. PDL1 expression uh, with triple negative breast cancer comes up to 26.4%. And the immune modulatory subtype of triple negative breast cancer is very much associated with the immune modulatory gene signature. And it's really characteristic with high expression of the genes that really set the function of T lymphocytes, immune transcription, and the um, in, uh, interfering response. So the expression of genes that regulate the checkpoints of the immune, immune immune system and we have told already that the pathway of pdl1 is the most important for the immune control and we see here that expression of genes that regulated um, is the way uh, well is true only for the immune modulatory uh, type of the breast cancer and this subtype is associated with the increase in lymphoid infiltration this last uh, data was presented at the asco of 2016 this annual meeting Everything is amazing, uh, but let us have a look at the first results of anti PD1, uh, PDL1 MKA in therapy of the breast cancer. Uh, the biggest, well, the most, you know, uh, diverse research trial 
uh, if I may, it includes 32 patients. Uh, pembrolizumab with the various types of solid tumors, including triple negative breast cancer. We had 32 patients to be included into the pembrolizumab trial. They were uh, chosen, uh, the doctors evaluated the expression of the cells and well about more than 1% of the cells should express this marker for the woman to be included into the pembrolizumab trial. This is very wide process, for example, metastasis in the, well, cerebral metastasis or visceral metastasis. Um, well, there are um, more than three lines, uh, about one uh, half of them, of the patients, about uh, taxan and trotaclin, uh, platinum, uh, based drugs, everything was there. So it was quite a small trial. And you see the diagram, this well, uh, waterfall diagram, the dynamics of a control in a locuses. And well, the frequency of the objective response is about 18.5. Uh, I believe for this small target group, it's a good result. But well, it was about 4% of the general regression. And well, the spider diagram that characterizes the uh, the time of the treatment, the medial line for the development of the uh, response is about 18 weeks, but the uh, but the response not is not always there. If the if the response develops, um, it lasts for a long period of time. The majority of the responses lasts for more than four. 40 weeks, which is more than the period of the investigation. And the majority of the patients continue to receive the therapy for more than for about 11 months. The survival curves, the median here is not that high. At the very beginning, the survival curves go down uh, without progression, uh, like 1.9 months. But in six months, 25% of the patients were still alive without progression. Um, after very intensive life treatment, triple negative breast cancer that, well, uh, it's only four weeks if it, it's we're talking about third line. The overall survival 66.7, median of the overall survival about a year and 12 months. Uh, after 12 months, 43% of the patients uh, are still alive. I mean, of those who were in the trial. So there is a solid group of those who have a lot of benefits from that. What are the uh, disadvantages? Uh, transaminase, diarrhea, uh, nausea, mild, uh, well, weakness. Uh, besides this uh, drug was studied with uh, hormone dependent um, breast cancer in the very beginning the experts um, evaluated that as disappointing but now they continue you know looking at it and they uh, found three patients with a long response I'm wrapping up anti pdl one one monoclonal antibody was studied at the triple negative breast cancer without progression 27 percent of uh, patients 27% of patients still uh, keep that response. New sphere is the combined therapy with the usage of uh, various drugs. Uh, Blockade inhibitors of the immune response are very much effective in triple uh, negative breast cancer that are characterized with a whole array of different characteristics that really uh, prove the involvement of pd one pdl one pathway in the progression of the um, tumor, the first result are quite promising and the strategy of PDL1 with the posit PDL1 positive tumors and the expression PDL1 TIL uh, could be quite effective and well the research has to be continued. Thank you very much for your attention.